and welcome to Hurt Retrospective, The Crux. Finally getting around to doing the last album they did before 2015. Uh, it came out in 2012, started recording in 2010. Uh, first thing I will say is it's a lot better than Goodbye to the Machine. I would be inclined to agree. Um, I believe Jay Lauren said that the sound was much more in line with uh, Volume 1 and 2, which I can certainly hear, although I'd say it's actually closer to the consummation. Yeah, I probably agree with that. I have to admit, when I first started out this album, the first thing that hit me in the first song was just, this sounds kind of like Nickelback. Luckily, that didn't stay around for too long. Yeah. Um, I think what saved it from sounding completely like a um, Nickelback song is the fact that it wasn't replete with the teen wankst that a lot of Nickelback songs have. Mm. Musically, at least, it does sound quite Nickelback. Yeah. Well, frankly, the musical side of things is not really the problem that we have with Nickelback. Yeah. Um, I was able to find out a bit of information with regards to uh, the Crux. Um, they... They had a couple of singles. I mean, that's technically speaking, because um, Numbers made debut radio play back in 2010, and the actual first single was How We End Up Alone, and that was early 2012. Um, it's actually quite interesting to note that um, they managed... Well, on the Wikipedia page for Hurt... It says that it peaked at number 75 on the Billboard 200, which for a small operation like Hurt... It's pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, on the Wikipedia page for The Crux itself, it says it peaked at number 71. Um, it had a few peak positions, which aren't too bad. Uh, number 6 on the hot top hard rock albums... Uh, number 9 on the top independent albums, number 19 on the top alternative albums, and number 27 on the top rock albums. So... It certainly got attention. Yeah. Definitely didn't do, do bad with that album, and... Well, it was definitely a pleasant return to form after... Because of the meshing. Yeah. Which is kind of strange when you consider who was, who the producer slash mixer was for this album. Oh? John Kurzweig. Or Kurzweig, I'm not sure. American names could be either. Unless he is German, so it would be Kurzweig. I mean, it looks like a German name, but who knows. Whatever. It does sound German to me. Yeah. Um, he also did production and mixing for Creed. And Puddle of Mud. Oh. I guess it ultimately is still down to uh, the songwriting itself rather than who's producing it. Yeah, because say what you like about those... I mean, the other two bands it lists here are Eagle Eye Cherry. Don't know that band. I know of them. I never listened to them much. Yeah. And Godsmack. Really like Godsmack. I, I won't say that they're one of the best bands or anything like that, but I like their music. Um... But say what you like about Creed, Puddle of Mud and Godsmack. The one thing you can say is their music is well produced and mixed. Mm. It's competently mixed. So everything sounds the way it should. At least assume the way it should. Unless they want it sounds, I don't know, St. Anger drums kind of weird. Yeah. Um, from the looks of things, the album had a bit of a fraught production time. Probably because of them being signed with a new record label, uh, Carved Records. Um, during recording of the album, um, their lead guitarist slash piano slash backing vocalist, Paul Spatola, uh, left the band due to personal issues. It doesn't elaborate past that. For some reason. Yeah. We'll probably never know. Yeah, it's not uncommon to encounter vagaries like that. It's sort of like Battle Beast, the original lead singer for them, 
left because of family reasons, and I don't know any more than that, so go figure. Um, the family reasons can come up all the time, just out of nowhere, usually. So. Yeah. Um, the personnel around during the recording of the album, aside from Jay Lauren and Victor Rebass, um, Rec Moore, that name! <laughs> it was a pretty good name. And Michael Roberts uh, doesn't give Wikipedia links, so they were the bassist and guitarist and backing vocals. Well, was it someone that uh, he happened to know that could fill in the gap? Yeah. I mean, who knows? Jay Lauren might listen to this episode and give a little bit of information there. Yeah. Um... I mean, he did take notice when I posted that we were doing the retrospective. I just hope he didn't take too much issue when we tore Goodbye to the Machine, a new one. Uh, <laughs> of course, no, if you listen to this episode, he's going to listen to us talking about him listening to the episode, and it's going to get really weird. <laughs> Don't cross the streams! <laughs> um. Anyway... Getting onto the album itself, um, I'd say it was a good mix of sounds from volumes one and two and consummation. Oh, I mean, again, being glad to agree with that, it's a pretty mixed bag in regards to actual sound, but thankfully not a mixed bag in place to quality. In fact, the most of it's actually pretty high. Yeah. There's no songs here that stood out to me as being below the bar, so. Mm. I mean, as with all the other albums, other than Good Boy Machine, it's always been the case of. Some of the songs, a little bit middling. Some of the songs, pretty damn great. And the rest of them kind of sit happily in the middle and just generally be pretty good. Yeah. I think that, that kind of does follow through here as well. Yeah. But there's no songs here I would say are actually outright bad. Just a few I don't necessarily like as much as others. Mm. I mean, uh, Links and Waves in particular stood out to me even for just being sort of interlude length. It's interlude length, but it also has the same kind of structure as a regular song, I guess. Yeah. I mean, he manages to deliver an insane amount of emotion just in that sort of, like, what, a minute and a half? One minute, 16, it's not even that. Yeah. Um, it kind of has a feel of a, a bit of um, Dance Russe, um, which I found out isn't actually Red Dance, it's Rushing Dance. Oh, um, I've never, I never learnt French. I was... Taught French, I think. I don't think I really paid much attention to it. Because, you know, high school and all. Uh, I, I just... I, I made a guess based on what red is in German and Spanish. Hmm. Um, what is it? Uh, it's Dance Russe. Something like that. I can't do the French pronunciation. Um, what would you say is especially a sa- standout song for you? I don't know. I don't know how the play plays it. Funnily enough, I'd... I definitely agree with that because um, it it kind of hails back to a, a lot of um, other songs he's had, which are discussing religion and all that sort of thing. What's well, interesting again is another example of the longest song being one of the best. So it seems to happen pretty consistently. Yeah, uh, that seems to be Hurt's str- major strength that. If they're allowed to build upon their songs and just let it progress, then that that sh- you kind of have a some bands can do the long songs and they're one of those bands. Other bands, it has to be a you know most they can do is five minutes, and any longer and you start to go bored. <laughs> um. Are there any particular ones that you'd say you'd cut from the album? Um, I wouldn't necessarily say anything I would cut. I mean, I must admit, Sue Wynn didn't necessarily grab me that much as an opening track. Mm. But it's not really a bad track, it's just a case of, it needs to get better the further you go in. Yeah. Um, I'd say Cuffed doesn't really stand out to me that much. I'm just thinking about it. I can't really think of it. It doesn't come to mind, so maybe it just didn't catch my attention too much. Yeah. I mean, there are no songs that make me go, no, nah, fuck this song. Nothing here is that bad, no. Everything is certainly listenable to. Mm. But some of them stand up more than others. I mean, other than, I don't know, when it's cool, stand up to me quite a lot. Mm. Uh, Sally Slips stood out to me quite a bit. I know what the title's actually about. 
<laughs> so why do you call this other slips, I wonder? Actually, I can explain that, because yeah. my impression of the song is that it hails back to discussions about substance and person dependency, and, you know, going through the lows and highs of such an, ex an existence. So, it being called Sally Slips, that Maybe Sally is a particular drug reference. Maybe he knew someone called Sally. I wouldn't like to say one way or the other because maybe that's a discussion for the next time he does a B sides, you know, B sides and footnotes too. He discusses Sally slips. If that happens, I'm all for it because, well, I think we will do a review of B-Sides and Footnotes, but that'll be a very weird one because we're reviewing reviews of an album. <laughs> so reviewing, isn't it awesome because we're reviewing a self-review of that? Yes. <laughs> it's really interesting to you know, go back and see what someone's opinion is of their own work. Hmm. be interesting. Mm. Um, but yeah, the whole slips bit. That would be sort of like falling off the wagon, kind of that sort of thing. You know, slipping into a drug dependency, all that sort of thing. We've very well, we've done quite a few songs based around drugs before. Yeah. Um, would you rearrange the songs in any particular way? Um, I think it stands out as being in the wrong place. I would say maybe you put something, or maybe just switch around Eden and so when. I think Eden's a stronger kind of opening track. Hmm. It's a stronger track in general. Yeah. I mean, uh, when it's cold, I reckon could well work as an ending, maybe? Yeah. The way it ends does feel like kind of a climax. I, I mean, the Sia, I'd say, also works well as an ending, because I find it to be a strangely comfortable song. I was into that, yeah. Even though it's a very haunted and pained song, there's a weird comfort to it. Maybe I can relate to the idea of um, finding comfort in a sort of oblivion that is presented in the seer, that <laughs> I'm able to infer that sort of idea. Possibly. But I don't know, I, I think the seer definitely works as a closing track. Uh, I'm just having a look through my notes. I was trying to write up notes for it but it's sort of like when i started listening to it i got so far and then it was sort of like i can't manage critical analysis and then last night i started having a migraine so it's sort of like i can't write anything <laughs> um i'd say caught in the caught in the rain is a really good fusion of standard instruments strings and piano mm, i always like strings and piano if they use properly, they're just generally good instruments. Yeah. Well, of course, I'm going to be a fan of strings. I mean, I'm a violinist, so. I listen to a lot of scores, so. <laughs> scores tend to use strings quite a lot. Yeah. But it'd be kind of weird if the violinist didn't like hearing strings. <laughs> yeah. Probably a bit odd. I mean, it's sort of like, no, I must not hear the strings. I can only hear my own. Then how do you learn? Um, Magic. Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to think. It... Yeah, I think it's definitely very much a return to form. Yeah. Because the machine honestly just didn't really work. Yeah. A couple of bits did, but most of it was just disappointing at best. Mm. This other half feels more like you know the, the direct conclu well, conclusion, but continuation from the earlier works. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those. I, I was genuinely worried about listening to The Crux because it's sort of like, oh god, oh god, oh god, please don't make it like goodbye to the machine. So when I first listened through some of the songs, it, it was a case of, oh, thank god for that. <laughs> um, so, final thoughts on the album? It's definitely a lot stronger than your the machine, which we've mentioned about 38 times in the last five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and... There was, a, there was another album after this, I think, isn't there? The next album is B-Sides and Footnotes. Okay. Um, at least I think I'm pretty sure that's the next album. Um, of course, given that he's been having a lot of health issues, both mental and physical, recently. Well, I say recently. I think it's been since the crux that he's been having those issues, so it's not surprising. It's the huh? It's the crux of the matter. 
Didn't you pretty much say one of his things, like, yeah, I mean, I'm going through all this shit, but there will be a new album coming and it'll be done when it's done. Yeah. But, well, seeing this is the guy that's been through a lot of shit and seems to draw a lot of his songwriting ability from going through a lot of shit, mm. hopefully the next album will be just as good. Yeah. If not real. As long as his next album isn't his Black Star. It is, yeah. Because... Well, at least if that happened, he would at least get a good album of it. Yeah. Yeah, but I'd rather it not be his last... You know, especially if it's a return to form and we get good shit like The Crux again. Hey, we get another good album. Finally, it's back on... Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I don't want that to happen. And I don't want to be in a position where one reporter writing about Black Star... Um, th- this is one of those... You really feel sorry for them for what they wrote because they said that this could be a a new progression in David Bowie's career or words to that effect. They must have They must have been really kicking themselves for writing that when the news came out. If not, I thought the next thing will be good Fuck. <laughs> so yeah. All I have to say is, Jay Lauren, if you are listening to this, I definitely want to hear more from you, but please make sure you're well enough first. Yeah, we'll find a way. I mean, hell, how long have we been waiting for the next Tool album? Eleven years! (laughs) Yeah, I did double check you were right that the last album was 2006. I thought it was. See ya. This is good. Yep. It's a good album. And hopefully the next one will be done when it's done and it will be good as well. Just have to wait and see what will be next. I mean, having a momentary blip in your career, having an album that's not like it is quite common. Mm. So some bands don't recover from it, others do. And in this case, it seems to be a yes. Yeah. That's a tense problem in a sense. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there was three years between Goodbye to the Machine and The Crux. And another three years between this and Besides and Footnotes. Besides and Footnotes is, as the title suggests, the songs that didn't get onto the albums and his discussions on some of the songs that are on the albums or didn't get onto them. And also the demos for some of the songs. It's a pretty common uh, kind of combination. Well, maybe not the... The discussion about songs that didn't get on there is something I don't actually think I've seen around much. Hmm. That's would be interesting to listen to. Yeah. But putting demos and B-sides together is quite common. Mm. It'll be definitely interesting to... What I'm thinking I'll do is look into what albums the B-sides were originally intended for. You know, like um, with Hospital Scene, that was originally mm. intended on, um, on Volume 2 instead of Ten Ton Brick. So I'm going to see if I can switch out and see how that affects the um, listen through. Hmm. Let's see what it would have been like if it went with the other. Yeah. But anyway, as for this album, definitely check it out as and when you get the chance, if you haven't already, because undoubtedly this will be posted on various forums re- related to Hurt. And also be five or so years after it came out. Yeah. Um, in fact, ah, oh, if only we'd done it last month, we could have done a five-year anniversary. <laughs> oh, well. Wait, what month is it? May. Oh, if only we'd done it last week, in fact. <laughs> is that the end of April, then? Um, May 1st, 2012. Ah, uh-huh. less than a week ago, in fact. Yeah, but of course... We'll just lie and say that we totally recorded this on the 1st of May, right? I think we've given the game away already. Shh. Uh, but anyway, um, we don't bother rating the Hurt albums, do we? Uh, I give it um, one better than Goodbye to the Machine. Zero. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> didn't really rate them, though. We just discuss them and say it's pretty good. Yep. Um, don't know what the next episode is going to be. Um, it's probably going to be with a guest host next time. If I'm moving house now. Yeah. I just decided we might as well do a continuation of the retrospective, considering we're so behind on music this month that it's sort of like, well, last month. 
whatever. Thanks, but uh, oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah, but it made more sense to just do a retrospective instead of trying to go ah, clusterfuck review. Out this stuff, but... Huh? I don't even know what's coming out at the moment. I know there's a new Cochalina live album out, but that's pretty much the only thing I know that's going on. Yeah. I think it's kind of pointless reviewing live albums because it's sort of like, if you weren't there, then you don't know the ins and outs of atmosphere and all you that there, sort man, of thing. You there. I mean, I do kind of know what the atmosphere are like because it's the same set list on the same tour that I attended, but it's different date. Yeah. But I was the only one there, so. And I did also mention it in my review the same time that it happened, so it's like a side note on one of the other reviews. Hmm. But anyway, whatever the next episode will be, it will be another album and band that I don't know anything about, because I'm leaving it up to the potential guest host to decide. Have fun. <laughs> oh no. Okay, that's... We shall see how that goes. Considering... I have an idea of who this person is. This could be interesting. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, watch out for the rants. <laughs> anyway, um, we will continue. Well, it's no longer a retrospective, really, because a current perspective. A continuation of the look at Hurt's album progression, because we've already set ourselves up for looking at Hurt's albums as they progress. So we might as well just operate on a when the next album comes out, that will be the current review. Makes sense. But anyway, I will catch you all in two weeks' time. Pierce will rejoin me. Yeah. yeah. He'll rejoin me after he's moved. Indeed. I hope he won't be dying then. <laughs> anyway, that's Goodbye from me. And goodbye from me. As you intervene, have you seen a light?